Okay, I feel like this video is long overdue, but um, I really wanted to make sure I knew what I was talking about when I went over these sites and the sites that I decided to finally settle on for self-defense sites on my Glock 32 357 SIG. Um, the 32 is basically a Glock 19 or a Glock 23. Um, it's just chambered in 357 SIG. So <clears throat> what I decided to go with on these are the XS standard dot uh, 24 seven sites. So they have a tritium insert in the rear blade that is basically a line and they have a tritium insert in the front which is just a dot. Sorry these sites are kind of dirty but um, these are um, what I use for uh, my self-defense gun. Basically, I've tried a lot of other sites out there. I've tried the Ameriglow iDots. I've tried the Trigicon HD sites. I've tried um, some Ameriglow fiber optics. I have Terran Tactical um, fiber optic sites on my 34. Um, I've tried, you know, the standard sites, um, standard uh, Glock Knight sites, um, True Glow TFOs. Um, and I'm sure there's a few other ones I'm missing, but I've tried a lot of different styles of sites out there. And um, so far, this is really what I've come down to as um, the site that works the best for me. And um, there's a few reasons for it, and I'll go over those in, in depth here and, and give you the reasoning behind why I've got these sites. Now, I had the big dots, and those I used for a long time. And I really like the big dots. They were really quick, um, very fast on target, um, and they were pretty accurate. Uh, the only thing I didn't like was when I was doing target shooting with them, that it was a little hard to get those bullseye shots because the uh, big dot really covered a lot of your of your picture because you just put that dot over top of the uh, target where you want it to hit. Um, so I went out and tried some other uh, sites like the Trigicons, the Mariglow, Mariglow iDot sites, and, and found that really those sites were, were no better. And um, carrying appendix style, I found that a lot of the rear blades on sites were um, coming out too far and were kind of stabbing me in the gut. I didn't like that, so I ended up really liking this site because it kind of tapers in, it's real smooth, um, and it's a real comfortable sight. So when I carry in the um, in the incog holster here, um, you know, the slide comes up here and it's it's pushing against you um, when you sit down or things like that. And if you have a, a sharp blade back there in the back of your um, sight there, it can cut into you and it doesn't feel very comfortable. So that's one of the reasons I like these sights. Um, one of the things I don't like, I would say, is that the, the rear sight is kind of small. There's not a lot of uh, ledge there to hook on anything so that's one of the reasons why I've looked at other sites as well um, but uh, it's not bad you can actually you can catch that on stuff and it's a metal site and it's pretty durable it's got two set screws that um, you can tighten it down with one thing that's nice about these is they're really easy to install um, the rear sight goes in really easily and then you use the set screws to hold it in place once you've got it dialed in and um, and you add some Loctite to it um, so this site here, the, the excess standards dot, dot site, um, is basically uh, about half the size of uh, the excess big dot. And, um, and that's going to be close to most of your defensive sites um, as far as the front site goes. It's going to be very similar to like the iDot front site or the Trujicon HD front site in size. Um, I do find it to be a little more accurate because the, uh, the uh, housing for it is rounded. So when you are trying to make that bullseye shot, you've actually got a uh, basically a nice rounded circle that you can put where you want that round to go. And it, it just makes it a little easier to line up. Um, the sight picture as far as speed goes is one of the best I've seen. Um, it's super, super simple. So you've got this notch and then you just put that dot. Now the dot looks bigger in real life on the camera. It kind of looks different because of perspective, but um, you basically just put that line underneath that dot and it gives you a really easy quick sight picture. You just kind of rest that dot down in the notch um, and you think, oh, it's so open that maybe um, your sight is going to be inaccurate because of how open it is, but really it's it's quite accurate because that line just goes right underneath that dot and as long as you got that line underneath there and you have the, the dot nestled down in the, uh, in the rear notch here, then you've got a nice accurate sight picture. So I really like that. These uh, sights are very fast on target for speed. Um, you really can't beat them. And for accuracy, they're excellent. So um, in comparing them to Trigicon HDs or IDOTs, um, they're every bit as accurate and every bit as fast, if not faster and more accurate. Um, I mean, a lot of people say, you know, oh, XX big dots. But the thing is, the big dots, I think, get the, the uh, bad rap because of that really big front dot. If you get the standard dots, you got to take away all that thinking because now you have a front sight that's the same size as most of these other competitors. Um, so 
I think uh, that's that's one of the reasons I really like the the standard dot size is it, it really gives you that accurate sharp sight picture. Now, the big dot I'm sure is a little quicker on target, maybe just because that dot's so big it probably jumps out at your eye. Um, so I think that the big dot maybe is is probably a little faster, but this can be a little more precise. Um, I think that if you're drawing very quickly in self defense at close range that you're probably not even using your sights anyways. You're just drawing and shooting. Um, and then at distance, you know, when you need to actually dial in your sights, I like this because you're going to get a little more accuracy at that distance. So I, I kind of feel like the big dots maybe aren't necessary and the standard dots are better. Um, shooting them both, um, I'm happier with the standard dots. I think that um, overall and the different types of shooting you'll do with your firearm and training, that you'll have more fun having the standard dot than the big dot. That's just my opinion. Maybe you like the big dot better. That's fine. But um, I, I like this uh, standard dot setup better. Um, my sight picture is pretty close right when I pull up on a uh, target. So, you know, the standard dots are pretty much just as fast for me. So I like them. Um, let's see. What else to go over? The uh, day sight picture. Um, it's pretty good in the daytime. Um, the white front dot is it's decent. But uh, what I would say is that the uh, contrast is not excellent. A white contrast is not very good with um, most of the things you're going to see in the day and, and during the day. Um, so on the big dot, it's fine because there's so much of the white that um, you, you get a, don't really need the contrast so much because the uh, site's so large that it just it's hard to miss. Um, on the standard dot, a huge improvement for these sites, I would say, would be to make that insert um, blaze orange or just a very bright color, kind of like the Trigicon HDs have or the um, uh, Mariglow eye dots have that bright orange color. If they could do that to this, I think that would make a huge improvement for speed um, on how quickly you can pick up that front sight. Um, so for your day sight picture, it's really good. I just think that the only thing that would be a little better is if they change the uh, color on that insert. Um, but yeah, it's really fast. It's really open. I like that. Um, that front sight, it's, it's hard to lose the front sight because of how shallow that rear sight is. And um, when you dot that eye, it's just it's real quick and intuitive. Um, I like that. You don't have to think a lot about it. It just your your brain and eyes naturally line it up. It just it, it's hard to explain, but that's just it's simple. I mean, it doesn't get much more simple than that. Um, as far as the night sight picture goes, um, from what I've seen in all the different sites I've used and tried, um, these are the best night sight picture I've ever seen. You have a dot, so you know which side is your front. You have a dot, so obviously that's your front, and you have a line. Obviously, that line is your rear. You dot the eye. I mean, this these should be called the eye dot because you literally have a line that dots an eye. And um, if you dot that eye, basically make an eye, um, you have your perfect sight alignment at night. Super quick. Um, you can't mess that up. You can't mix it up. It's just, you know, if you only see the line, then your front sight's too low. If you see the dot and the line is too low below it, then you know that's wrong. So you just put it right up underneath there, and you've got that perfect sight picture at night. Um, yeah, never seen a better sight picture than that for night. Uh, hands down, the best night sight picture out there, in my opinion. Um, so as far as one-handed manipulations go um, and that kind of stuff, I would say that this is uh, not not the best rear sight, but it works. Um, so uh, a big improvement that they could do on that is to make this, um, instead of, let's see here, you can kind of see how the sight tapers to a point from the front and the back. If they could just make the front of this or the, the front of the sight not taper and just go straight up or even hook forward would be ideal. If they can make this back sight um, have a little bit of a hook forward, they don't have to make it taller or anything or really change anything. Just make the, the front here hook forward. If they hook that forward and then put an orange dot here, this sight would be absolute perfection. I, I don't think you could even think to do a better sight for self-defense if they did that. Um, those are only two things that I would change on the excess standard dots. Um, so pretty much from what I've seen out of these sites, they've been very durable. Um, the, uh, you know, the rear sight doesn't fall off. Uh, the, the insert on the front does not pop out. Um, I haven't really seen any issues with them. Um, let's see. So as far as issues I have had, let's go ahead and go over those. Um, rust, um, rust has occurred. I've seen, um, on the big dots, I had a really rainy season and I did notice, um, a little bit of accumulation of, um, a little bit of rust there. Um, I'm not sure if any accumulated on the rear, but I did notice that. And, uh, I know some other people actually were complaining about it at the same time, uh, in classes and things that I went to. So I don't think it's necessarily something to blame the sites for. 
there were other sites like uh, there's some Trigicon sites that some guy was complaining about. So I, I think it more just had to do with the rainy season and, and me not oiling the sights. Now the Glock itself um, is an excellent gun. And I mean, these aren't made by Glock, but everything on the Glock doesn't rust. I don't ever have an issue with anything rusting on the Glock. Um, and I would have no doubt that the Glock sights would not rust either. You know, the uh, metal ones that um, they, they make. So I think Glock does a really good job of that. Um, so I can't, you know, I, I just figure that a lot of these sites out there um, are not using the best coatings on them to keep from rusting. So there have been a little bit of accumulation of rust. Um, other than that, the other problem I've had is, uh, and I think it's a pretty common problem, is that the rear tritium um, can burn out. And I think uh, what I was told by XS was that the rear tritium, um, basically the vial in there can crack if you over tighten the sight. And um, I think that's probably what I did because the first ones I had, I really cranked them down and that tritium vial, you know, burn out within a couple weeks of owning it. And that really kind of, you know, made me upset about that. But then uh, when I contacted XS and I told them about it, they um, immediately sent me a new rear sight. Um, really no questions asked, just kind of like, uh, what did they ask me? Just asked me for my address, basically, and uh, to take a picture of the old site. That's all they wanted. They wanted a picture of the old site and my address. Boom, sent out me a new site. Uh, you can't beat that. I mean, I've heard True Glow uh, stories about True Glow TFOs where they're like, "Oh, you got to send that site back to us," you know. And then when they get the site finally, then they'll they'll you know send you out the new one or they'll repair it. Um, you can't beat customer service that they just send you out a new site based on a photograph of the site. That's um, insanely good. So nothing but excellent things to say about the XS company. Um, I love the sites in general. Um, they're very fast for me, very accurate for me. Um, just overall, the XS standard out sights to me are an excellent combination for a self-defense gun. Um, there's only a couple things I mentioned there. I mean, this is an honest review, um, not holding anything back or hiding anything, telling you all the issues I've had with them and um, all the benefits from them. And hopefully that's helpful for you and and uh, maybe picking a site that you'd like to have. But um, yeah, that's been the uh, XS standard dot sights.